Welcome everyone. My name is Julia and I am a career coach and strategist with over 10 years of experience helping ambitious professionals like you find clarity in who you are and helping you align your values and preferences to your career. This podcast is one of many ways that I share my knowledge, strategies, and experience with you. And if you check out the podcast page on my website, I have all the seasons organized and easily accessible to find what you need. Along with the podcast, I also have multiple courses, resources, and I offer one-on-one -on -one customized career coaching covering career exploration, career management, and career advancement. So head on over to ridethetidecollective.com to check it all out. All right, this season has been all about the control your career process. And basically, I'm helping you share a process that's going to help you ultimately control your career. This episode is going to cover goals and strategy. This is phase three of the process and ultimately the program called purpose driven plan. So you will identify and articulate your holistic and career goals, both short term and long term through the lens of your values and your definition of success. Before I go too in depth with this topic, I want to be clear about my views on goals. There are a lot of common ways to articulate goals and I use one of them in this program and process and I will explain that today. But having said that, you need to work through goals in a way that works best for you. So one of the things that we do in phase two, which is identity analysis, it's the previous uh, episode, is you learn about your personality and how you work. So in the program, through conversations and coaching sessions, I get an idea of who you are and what you're likely going to need to accomplish your goals. For example, some people are amazing at articulating their goals and making a plan, but some need more help on the execution side and vice versa. So you need to understand your natural tendencies when it comes to goals. So take time to think about that. Are you internally motivated? Are you pressure prompted? Do you need rewards? Figure out what you need to make the goal happen. As you work through your goals and maybe you figure out that there is a block for you somewhere, so either to create them or execute them or something else, this is usually a time to get additional help. So if it's a career thing, then someone like me can help with that type of block. But in some cases, you might need a licensed professional to help you get past whatever is blocking you. A lot of times, uh, bigger blocks like that can come from some type of trauma that you've had in your life that's impacting how you make decisions and how you figure things out. It really just depends on the situation. And while I am not a licensed mental health professional, I do have a counseling focused master's degree that does clue me in to when my clients need additional help that I can't provide. And I am I have a very clear line there that I draw with clients and I will absolutely let you know in the event that you are a client of mine. So while we are focusing primarily on controlling your career this season, I do have clients outline their goals in multiple areas of their career and life. These are more holistic goals. Why? Because your career goals might not be the most important thing for you in this season. I take a holistic look at goals because if there's another area of your life that needs to be focused on, we will go there first and come back to career. The best example I have for this are financial goals. Finances create some of the biggest barriers for people to manage in their life and their career. If you are worried about finances every single day, you likely won't be able to give your mind space to consider your career, or you will make rash career decisions that don't align with who you are and what you actually need. And this is where values comes into play. 
I, and that's why I do a values assessment ahead of a lot of this other information, because we need to know what you care about most. And as you're articulating your goals, we will also go back to what you value and make sure that those two things align. So for the purposes of this episode, I want to share some of the areas that um, I help clients outline outside of career when it comes to goals. So this is not a comprehensive list because we would be here forever. <laughs> um, I cover many areas within the formal program, but I don't want to overwhelm you. So I want to share a couple of goal areas that we talk about that I find to be the most impactful for clients for different reasons. So I'm going to share a couple of those and then we'll go into career goals and what that will look like. So first, and I mentioned this before, finances. This is such a loaded topic that can have many outcomes and feelings attached to it. So here are some of the questions that I like to ask clients. Do you have debt? <laughs> but I, again, I know that even this question is very loaded for some people, but you need to have an understanding of what your debt is, good debt or bad debt. And do you have a plan to repay that debt? So again, you want to think about there's a difference between your mortgage, even your educational debt versus consumer debt, consumer credit cards and things like that. So, you know, we want to try to get rid of some of that consumer debt before we start tackling the bigger things. But what is your plan for that? Do you have a plan, right? So being really honest with yourself about what that looks like. Do you have a budget? This is one of my favorite topics. Uh, do you have a budget? Do you follow it? And then do you have the ability to live within your means? So that's what a budget does is it helps us direct our money where we want it to go. And that doesn't mean that you can't have things that you want, right? It doesn't mean you can't go to Starbucks. It doesn't mean you can't go eat out, but it means that you have thoughtfully allocated your money into the areas that you want it to go in. Um, so budgeting is definitely something that I like to talk to clients about regardless of where you're at because to me again finances and career go hand in hand so much so again finances impact your career because your financial situation influences your career choices and most importantly your salary requirements but more money doesn't necessarily mean you won't have the same issues unless you can manage your money well. Financial literacy can absolutely be learned. So what are your financial goals in general? It's not always about debt. It's not always about managing your money. But what do you have in terms of goals? What are things that you have to look forward to? Are you trying to save for a house? Um, are you putting money into retirement? You know, do you know what you want retirement to look like and how much money is that going to take? Do you travel? Do you want to travel and put money into that now? You know, there's nothing wrong with that. As I said, finances are a major obstacle for many people and having a realistic view of where you're at and what you need or want to do is very, very helpful. Money influences us and motivates us in most cases. It's what allows us to live a certain lifestyle and do the things that we want. So we definitely want to talk about finances alongside career. Next is health. And similar to finances, health can play a major factor in impacting your day-to-day -day energy and well-being. One thing to consider with your health is that your career situation may be impacting your health. So if you're in a place where you have chronic stress or you're burned out, your body is going to react to that. I had seasons where I was eating well, I was exercising, I was doing all the things for my health and it still wasn't great because the stress that I carried negated all my other good and healthy habits. So regardless of the state of your health, 
being clear about where you're at with it and what needs to happen within your abilities are great first steps for change. If your job or career is creating the stress, this is a good example of prioritizing goals that impact one another. So in this case, changing your career would likely, not always, but likely impact your health in a positive way. And likely just the act of change uh, within your career is enough to help you reset and start some new habits alongside a new career. So there's definitely an opportunity there. And health isn't just physical either. I think that's the one thing that we tend to think about is, oh, it's about, you know, our diet and what we're eating. It's about physical, you know, moving your body and all of that. But it's not just about that. Mental health also needs to be articulated and prioritized. Uh, managing any situations that you have or any barriers within your mental health are also going to impact your career choices. And then finally, spiritual goals. And I don't always talk about spirituality and, um, and its impact with career on this podcast, but they do go hand in hand for those who have a spiritual or religious practice. And so the reason that, that I like to talk about it is for those who do have that, it becomes a major driver. So even if this doesn't apply to you, there are many people that it does apply to. And so I want to make sure that I make a nod to that. Um, Cause I would say about half of my clients, the, their spiritual practice really impacts their career choices. And so I want to make sure that um, we have this conversation. So one other thing to keep in mind is that while I have my own beliefs, um, that will never impede on your beliefs. So I've worked with clients from varied spiritual backgrounds. And when we relate it to career, there are so many similarities um, just across the board when it comes to spiritual beliefs in how we make decisions regarding career. So that's really the conversation that we're having. For me, it doesn't matter to me what your spiritual belief or background is because that's, that's your personal belief. But having a conversation of how it intersects with career, I absolutely love having those conversations um, because that's also a values alignment as well. And again, for most people, their values and their purpose align with what they wanna do in their career. But in some cases not, in some cases there is an alignment with the organizational values, but the career path, it doesn't connect. So don't feel like that it has to be that way for you. There is no right or wrong answer here. It's really about what works best for you and your faith practice and your values overall. The other side of spiritual goals, aside from its connection to career, um, is it's tied really with your faith, your specific faith, and where and what do you want it to be? So do you wanna be more involved? Do you wanna find a spiritual com uh, community do you have faith practices that you want to make sure you're making time for, you know, all of that? So we have two sides, the career implication through values, not implication, but the career connection through values, and then just your own personal um, spiritual walk, I guess. Um, those are the terms I'm most familiar with that will help you, you know, focus more on your spirituality or your religion if that's a goal of yours. Okay. So now that we've covered at least three of these holistic goals outside of career, um, let's talk about career. Let's talk about career goals. So career goals come in multiple ways, depending on your situation, but the main goals are generally related to career exploration, career management, and career advancement. So where are you right now from a career perspective? Now, in the next episode, I will actually cover these three topics in more depth as they are the most common focus for the action phase of the process. And I'll be breaking some of that down. 
So you might want to go listen to that episode. Um, well, you don't have to listen to it first. It doesn't really matter. But if you're listening to this and the other one hasn't come out yet, definitely listen to that one when it comes out because it'll give you a little bit more breakdown um, of these three areas. But ultimately, what is the most pressing thing that you need to figure out when it comes to career? Maybe you're new in a position and you need to navigate a new boss and expectations. Maybe you're ready to move on from your position and company, but you're not quite sure where to head next. Maybe you're completely lost about what to do in your career and you need to start over. There are a lot of possibilities and goals you can have for your career, but don't overthink it. What needs to happen immediately versus what does success look like long term? At this point, you might be thinking there's a lot of information to figure out. Um, you likely have multiple goals that you're trying to sort through. And this is where prioritization comes into play. And this is honestly where having somebody to uh, talk through all of this with is really helpful. It doesn't have to be a coach, though obviously I have resources to do that with you. Um, but if you have somebody trusted in your life that you can talk through with these goals, I highly recommend that because it's so much easier to talk it out and work with somebody and help th have them ask you questions and poke holes and all of that than it is sometimes for us to think through things on our own, okay? So in normal goal setting, you would consider those long-term goals that you're trying to reach and then work backwards and create a plan from that. Um, your short-term goals are usually born from the various steps you need to go through to reach whatever that ultimate goal is. We're not doing that today. <laughs> we are not doing that today because that is a lot more of a complicated process and likely you're in a place where you're trying to manage things more immediately, right? So there are always two to three situations that are currently happening that need to be managed immediately before we can focus on long-term success. So given what we've gone through in this episode, what do you believe are the most pressing goals that you need to execute right now? For some of you, this is gonna be hard. It's gonna be really hard because you're gonna be fighting between what you know needs to happen and then other people's influence and expectations around you. And also to add into the mix, society's expectations of you. But here's the deal, controlling your career and ultimately your life, which is a lot of what we do in this process, it isn't about other people, it's about you. At most, you need to consider those who would be directly impacted by your choices. Generally, that's a partner, children, sometimes family members if you're close with them or you live with them but beyond that it doesn't matter ideally one of these immediate goals is career related given what we're trying to do here but not always as i said before sometimes we need to work on other areas before we can create a space to work on our career at this point, once you have a few goals that you're ready to take action on, I recommend the SMART goal structure to outline what you need to be able to move forward. So I have a few other exercises that I use, but this is the main one. And so in the beginning, when you heard me talk about there are some common frameworks for goal setting, this is one of them. Um, some people love this one, some people don't. Like I said, I have a couple different exercises that I use uh, to make sure that I hit different people, but this is really the easiest one, I think, for people to grasp and understand. So let's go through it. Uh, the SMART goal framework is an acronym. SMART is an acronym, and the S stands for specific. So making sure that you have all the information and details about your goal and it's not too broad in what you're trying to do. 
And the more specific you are, the easier it is to measure. Um, so M is for measurable. So we wanna make sure that we're creating milestones or checkpoints that help you know that you're moving forward and you know each step in the process toward success. A is for achievable. <laughs> um, I always love this one because it's it's making sure that your goal is realistic. <laughs> so can you actually accomplish it? Um, so I do talk a lot about kind of our big goals and is that something that's achievable? Um, I asked that question earlier this season and sometimes those goals are more like a, oh, it'd be really cool to do this, but is it realistic within my situation right now? No. So the A is achievable. We want to make sure that we have that realistic goal and we can actually accomplish it um, in, a, in a decent amount of time, which we'll talk about in just a second. So R is for relevant. And this is all about motivation to accomplish the goal. So figuring out what are the stakes and the timing to make sure that it's relevant, you know, within your current season of life. Sometimes we have these really big goals that we know are going to take a couple of years to get to. That's when we then have to create those milestones so that we know, right? And you can actually take a big goal and break it into smaller goals and then break that down. Usually that's what I recommend when it comes to career. Um, that's what allows us to have some of those immediate things that we need to deal with. Then we start to focus on some of those long-term uh, career goals that we want. And then finally, T is for time bound or timing. And so this is making sure that we're setting completion dates that are realistic. I don't know about you, but I do not still to this day do not have a good handle on how long it takes me to accomplish something. Um, I always think it's going to take less time <laughs> and it always ends up taking more time. So I would say to set a realistic date, unless you like, if the date is firm because of other situations, that's different. But if it's a date that you are choosing for yourself, make sure it's realistic and give yourself extra space and extra time to accomplish it. All right, so what is the point of outlining all this information for a goal? I know for some of you, you think it's very tedious, but it's progress. So many people think that they haven't done anything to work toward their goals. And the reality is you've done a lot. They've done a lot and you aren't tracking the details and you see the end goal and you see that it's not complete and therefore believe that you have done nothing. So I'm saying you need to celebrate the milestones and the small wins. And this process allows you to do that. So for example, if the end goal is a new job, celebrate writing your resume, celebrate doing research, celebrate networking, celebrate an interview. Oh my gosh, getting an interview is a big deal. Celebrate that. Even if a job doesn't result right away, you have to celebrate the work that you're doing, that you're putting toward that main goal to remind yourself that you're committed. I think also when we talk to other people about our goals and all they see is, oh, well, you want a new job and you don't have a new job. Well, there's a lot of steps between deciding you want a new job and actually getting it. And so making sure that when you're talking about your progress, you're talking about it in such a way to say, hey, I'm working toward it and here's what I'm doing and here's what I've done and be proud of that progress. All right. So what is the action for this episode? I mean, there's a lot of action already in this episode, but to hone in and get you to focus a little bit more, um, I'd like you to identify what your main immediate goals are right now. What are the things that you feel like you need to work through in order to be able to look at some of those bigger picture long-term goals? If you want to go the extra mile, outline those goals with that SMART framework. And you can Google that if you want um, 
more information or you can search that if you want more information around that framework um, and details. There's tons of information about it out there um, on the internet. And so it's really easy to find. Thank you so much for joining me on today's episode and I will see you next time.